the Padres are 79 and 75 on the year and they're 12 games out of first. The Padres though did overtake Houston in the battle for fourth place if that's an important battle which I doubt. But Houston now a game behind San Diego. The Braves defensively have Rungi at third Zubella at short Hubbard at second and Horner at first in the outfield from left to right Terry Harper Dale Murphy and Brad Cummins and Rick Sarone behind the plate on the open Pete alluded to the fact that there's an outside chance that Rick Mailer could win 20. He pitched his heart out in Cincinnati the other night. He came back after missing three weeks and for Mailer that would be six or seven or even eight starts. Pissed his heart out but a gimme run Milt Thompson fell down chasing a pop fly to left field gave the Reds a run and went to extra innings. The Braves won the game however Mailer did not get credit for the victory. If Mailer wins today and wins in his next start let's say Thursday which would be in Los Angeles then he might start on two days rest on Sunday in San Francisco to try to get the 20th win. But the first thing is he has to win the 18th ball game. And as this game goes on we'll give you all the football scores and all the baseball scores especially the ones concerning the divisional pennant races and every division has a pretty good pennant race going on. It's a beautiful afternoon in Atlanta. We're very happy you tuned us in. Jerry Royster leads off against Rick Mailer and leading off the broadcast just back from his big Purdue Notre Dame football game is Pete Van Wert. Thank you John. Royster's had a good year. 287 five homers 30 RBIs takes the first pitch low ball and he and Tim Flannery have shared the second base position. Royster playing at shortstop today. Templeton not in there after being hit by that grounder last night. One and one the count. Final home game of 1985. Braves head for Houston right after this one. It's now two and one on Royster. Cardinals playing in Montreal this afternoon. That game is now in the third inning. Montreal leading at one nothing. Hubbard should handle this one. And there's one down. Mets are playing at Pittsburgh. No score after two in their game. Magic number for St. Louis is four. In fact, magic number is four all over the place. Every place except that American League West. Yankees playing a doubleheader today against Baltimore in the first game. They are now in the bottom half of the fourth inning. New York leading at one nothing. California's picked up a run down the top of the second. They trail Cleveland 2-1. Indians, or I should say the Angels, still batting in the top of the second. Here's Tony Gwynn taking his strike. He's having another good year. 314, five homers, 41 RBIs. One and one the count. Kansas City plays at Minnesota. That game not yet underway. Toronto plays at Milwaukee. That game not yet underway. Two and one, the count now on Gwynn. Could you see how the Angels lost their ball game yesterday? It just seems to happen to a Gene Mock team, doesn't it? Well, oh, that's amazing. They had a five-nothing lead going to the bottom of the eighth. The Angels scored five. Uh, the Indians scored five runs. Three on a home run by Andre Thornton. Went to the bottom of the ninth, and Jerry Willard with a two-run home run. And the Angels lost. He's had two or three games lost just like that in the last couple of weeks. Here's the 2 2 now to Gwynn. The breaking ball missed outside. 3 and 2. Beautiful day here in Atlanta. A little bit of a breeze blowing out toward left center field. Still a full count. 3 and 2. Mailer two and one this year, four and four lifetime against San Diego. It remains three and two on Tony Gwynn. Steve Garvey on deck. And the payoff pitch is ripped to deep center field. Murphy going back. He's there. Two down.
I saw some of your game yesterday, the Purdue Notre Dame game. And uh, you had a heck of a ball game and almost predicted that Purdue comes up with great efforts against Notre Dame. They've been doing it for 20 or 30 years. They really do. And Jim Everett, I'll tell you, for a college quarterback, I know there were a lot of pro scouts there watching that game yesterday, and they were drooling when they left. What a good-looking young player he is. Yeah, he looks terrific. He's like the perfect pro quarterback. Here's Steve Garvey taking a strike nothing in one. Garvey 273 with 17 homers, 76 RBIs. Nothing in two to count. And the 0-2 pitch, slow curve, strikes out Garvey. 1-2-3 for the Padres in the top half of the first. We have played a half inning at San Diego, nothing. Atlanta coming up. The bottom half of the first inning, there's a look at the Padres defensively. Pretty much their regular unit out there today, with the exception of Jerry Royster at short in place of Gary Templeton. And on the mound for the Padres, left-hander Mark Thurman, who's had a disappointing year, a record of 6-11, and 4.26 earned run average. Appearance number 35, start number 22. 0-1 oh this year, 3-3 three three lifetime against Atlanta. Paul Zavella leads it off of the Braves. Glenn Hubbard will follow, then Dale Murphy. Zavella batting 228. He has no homers and three runs driven in. First pitch on the way from Thurman, taking high and away ball one. Thurman last year was a 14-game winner with only eight losses and an ERA of under three, 2.97. That's a fair ball down the left field line. Zavella should get two. And he's on in second with a leadoff double. Right down the line for his sixth double of the year. And even though there's a left-hand pitcher, they were not playing Zavella to pull. Greg Nettles was off the third baseline for a right-hand hitter. Really just a bouncing ball right down the third baseline. It bounds way over Nettle's head. And Zoo gets a double. That's that area, Pete, where we've seen a lot of high bouncing balls the past couple weeks. Here's Hubbard batting 231 with five homers and 39 RBIs. Braves tried for an early run. The bump for it first. Garvey, did he get him? I don't think he did. He missed him. And the runners are safe at first and third. So give Hubbard a bunt single. And that was clear to the naked eye. Garvey just didn't get him. Hubby dipped the shoulder down to help out. And the Braves have two on, no one out. And here's Murph coming off a big night last night when he had a few base hits and four RBIs. Now hitting 298 for the year, 37 homers, 108 RBIs. He would like to finish at the 300 level, has a good shot at it. Needs to raise the average two points over the final week. Takes high ball one. Murph finishing strong this year. Will finish with MVP-type numbers, but... Because of where the Braves are in the standings, it would be a real long shot for Murph to win the MVP. He'll get a lot of votes. Maybe finish third, fourth, somewhere in there. This will be our no, it won't be. Yes, it will be. They get the force play at second. Looked like a double play ball that would take away the RBI from Dale Murphy as they were going to let the run score anyway. But then when Royster bobbled it, he had to settle for the 6-4 force play. So instead, Murphy does get an RBI as 109th. Well, and for us, that's the key. We want Murph to get RBIs. Jerry just didn't come up with it and could only get the four. So the Braves get a 1-0 lead, and for Dale is 109th RBI. Now Bob Horner batting 275, 27 homers, 88 RBIs. Oh, 
Thurman going to first. We'll duck in some football scores. Big upset in the making in Kansas City where the Chiefs lead Seattle in the second period 14 nothing. Off his fists in foul territory and up into the seats 0 and 1. The Washington Redskins who were thought to be one of the best teams in pro football are getting beaten up every week. As someone on the Redskins said recently maybe we're not as good as we're supposed to be and today in the second period Chicago leads Washington 28 10. Hmm. Little age maybe catching up with that club. In Washington D.C. they got they have just been gaga over the Redskins the past few years. I wonder if that relationship will continue if they lose. I remember doing a basketball game there was there for a weekend. It was a big weekend. Every Redskin had his own television show. Oh, yes. Every, <laughs> everyone on the team had some kind of a show. One ball one strike on Horner Murphy at first with one out one run in. Buffalo is losing there in the second period Minnesota beating Buffalo 20 to 3. Buffalo having a rough go the past couple of years. Now the one one to Horner deep to left field Martinez goes back to the warning track and makes a nice catch and drops the ball. Heading for third is Murphy and the runners will be at second and third. That ball was hit so hard. It's kind of hard to believe this. You'll sometimes see a guy hit an infield line drive that will handcuff an infielder. But that ball of the outfield was hit so hard it had the outfielder all tied up. And it also kind of had a little hook to it. As Murph, or rather Bob Warner hit this line drive to left field. Martinez now has to come back for the ball. A little ice cream cone that falls out of his mitt. He is not the most graceful of fielders. That's the guy that was involved with Eric Shaw and Shaw thought he should have caught a ball that he did not catch. They so it's charged an error to Carmelo Martinez. Runners at second and third. One run in. Only one man out, and Terry Harper will be the batter. He's hitting 258 with 17 homers and 70 runs driven in. They're at halftime down Kansas City. Chiefs leading Seattle 21 0. And in the second period, St. Louis leads Green Bay 16 0. Giants Philadelphia scoreless in the first period. Here's the pitch to Harper, missing low and inside, ball one. I tell you, Purdue came out with something that I've never seen yesterday. All black uniforms. A little different, eh? <laughs> Here's the one nothing pitch up high, 2 0. They still have the uh, golden girl there? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah? Good. Adds to the football enjoyment, I've always said. Corner at second, Murphy at third, one out, one run in. And the 2 0 pitch, high and inside, 3 0. Thurman's had a lot of games like this this year where he's gotten in trouble right off the bat. Minnesota's picked up a run in the bottom half of the first inning. They're still batting, leading Kansas City 1 0. Now we we'll get the intentional walk to Terry Harper, and they're loaded for Rick Cerrone. Someone could be sarcastic and say I wonder if Kansas City and California will ever win another game but someone will because they meet soon for three games in Kansas City. You gotta wonder a little bit about California's chances they're all through with their home yes. season every yes. game they have left is on the road and it's tough to win on the road although I think at this stage of the season if you're in the race doesn't really make much difference where you play. Cerrone batting 219 three home runs 24 runs driven in. Infield will play double play depth with one out. And it's ball one to Rick Cerrone. Rick's catching counterpart Bruce Benedict today signed a new three year contract with Atlanta. Here's the 1 0 pitch roll toward short Royster to Flannery on to Garvey to end the inning. So the Braves threatened to put together a big inning in the first. They have to settle for that one run. And at the end of one, Braves lead it 1 0. Got a whistle in you? 
Toyota will help you load up for less. Chrome front bumper, split bench seat, AM FM stereo combo. Buy any of these 1985 Toyota trucks and you can load up with over a thousand dollars worth of added features for only $399. So load up and save $659. Look for this sticker. Now that's worth whistling about. Oh, 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 what a feeling. Toyota. When do you say L.A.? You know, I used to attend bar. And I have observed that sometimes when you're having a good old time, it's possible to get a little carried away. That's why I like L.A. from Anheuser Bush. L.A. tastes great and has just half the alcohol. And sometimes that's a darn good idea. Like my daddy used to say, the real trick to carrying on is not getting carried away. That's beautiful. L.A., sometimes it's the perfect thing to say. For America's game, the NBA, exclusively on Superstation WTBS, starting October 21st. In the second inning, Greg Nettles, Terry Kennedy, and Carmelo Martinez do up. Braves leading at one nothing. Final meeting of the year, of course, between these two teams. Braves have two games left in Houston, two left in Los Angeles, and three left in San Francisco after the day. I know you're batching it because Elaine's away at a wedding. Any any problems? Um, my, thanks to my son, no. My, my son knows how to push the right buttons on washing machines and dryers and things like that. So we'll we'll put give all the credit to Steve because I can't boil water. <laughs> I uh, I pulled one of my all timers today, which we'll get into. It's nettles as a bat. Greg Nettles batting 256, 15 homers, and 56 RBIs. He'll be back with the Padres next year. One ball, no strikes. I decided to have a bun with my coffee this morning. Not unreasonable, and I was warming it up in the broiler. And the phone rang. <laughs> I think I could already sense the outcome of this tale. Boy, it was terrible. It was much worse than it's going to sound. And I came back a long time later. <laughs> well, I mean, well, one of those sterling brain locks that happened every day. Do it one, look out. You know, if you burn it enough, not only is the kitchen and that area filled with smoke, but the soot, these newfangled stoves they, they, they blow the soot out and it went all over <laughs> wow what a mess and I'm packing and trying to shave and get down here we're leaving to... I just thought I'd throw that in misery loves company been that kind of year hasn't it <laughs> two and two the count full count three and two be like that guy in uh, Texas a few years ago they read a story about you shouldn't put golf balls in a cool place. You should keep them in a warm place because they'll travel further. He decided to put his in the microwave oven, almost burned his house down. <laughs> they exploded. Oh, boy. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Right back to the pitcher. Rick Manor will take care of this one. And four in a row have been retired now by Mailer. California and Cleveland now tied up 2 2. Angel still batting in the third. Here it's one nothing Atlanta Terry Kennedy the batter 262 with 10 homers and 73 RBIs. Line toward left Terry Harper thought about it. Oh almost got hit by that one. Kennedy will wind up at second. I don't think he'll go any further than that as Harper gets it back. Harper was thinking about making a shoestring attempt. Then changed his mind, but he almost changed his mind too late. That ball almost landed right on him. You see, Terry pulls up short. Then the ball hits. He falls down. The ball just misses his face. And if you're wondering how Kennedy can only get a double out of that, he's not too swift on the base pass, but he hit it hard. 
27th double for Terry Kennedy. First hit off Rick Mailer this afternoon. Carmelo Martinez now the batter. Martinez at 254. He has 19 homers, 65 runs driven in. Time called as Martinez steps out. Baylor's pitch on the way to Martinez toward short. Rungi cuts in front of Zavella and throws out Carmelo Martinez. Two down. Holding at second, Terry Kennedy. Well, the Angels batting in the third have scored two runs. One on, two out, and they now lead Cleveland 3-2. The Yanks picked up another run. They're still batting in the fifth. The Yankees leading the Orioles in the first of two, two nothing. Here's Kevin McReynolds, a low batting average this year, 237. Home runs so so with 14. RBIs up there pretty good for that kind of an average, 74 runs driven in. One ball, no strike. That's Eric Kennedy on Pete on the star of the game Friday night. Boy, was he honest. He blamed it all on the hitting woes for the Padres. He said the pitching really has held up and a pretty good defensive ball club. Fastball missing outside 2 and 0. Oh. He said that he and others have not had the real timely hit. You don't see teams have back to back big seasons very much anymore. Mm. Not like you used to. It used to be a team would get a certain group of people together and they'd reel off victory after victory for a four or five year period. Doesn't happen that much anymore. Rungi again on to Horner in time to get. Nick Reynolds and end the inning. So the San Diego Padres come up with that double by Terry Kennedy, and that's all. They leave the runner at second. Braves still lead at 1-0 as we go to the bottom half of inning two. This is where it all begins. A diagram in the team's playbook. And this is where it takes shape, out on the practice field. But here's where it really comes together, in a packed stadium on Sunday afternoon, the game on the line. Call this toll-free number to get in on a special half-price offer. The Sporting News delivered straight to your mailbox every week at a hefty saving. You'll get the latest slowdown and the hottest showdown. The facts, the quotes, the trends, the drafts, all through the NFL season on to the playoffs and the Super Bowl. The Sporting News delivers hard-hitting, close-up action and stats you just won't find in your local news or anywhere else. The Sporting News, where 40 hometown writers coast to coast bring you the non-stop excitement of your favorite sports. On-the-scene coverage of pro and college football, basketball, baseball, hockey, boxing, and more. 52 weeks a year. Now here's a friend to let you in on that special half-price offer. Take Bob's tip and take advantage of this half-price sporting news offer now. Call toll-free 1-800-257-1234. You'll get 30 weekly issues of the sporting news for less than 50 cents an issue, a savings of one half off the regular subscription rate. What's more, you can pay in three easy installments of only $4.96 each. Our lowest price anywhere, and you can bet on that. So call now, 1-800-257-1234. That's 1-800-257-1234. No matter what the score, there's one sports team you can count on. Sports Tonight, every night at 11.30 p.m. Eastern on CNN. Okay, I will. And this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Braves, intended solely for the entertainment of our audience, any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or uh, the use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Braves, and the turn of broadcasting system is prohibited. Brad Cobbins leads off the bottom of the second. 225 for the year. Lines the first pitch toward right. Tony Gwynn right there. And on one pitch, there's one out in the bottom half of the second. Yes, that banner you saw a moment ago pretty well sums up the frustration on the part of Atlanta fans. Not only about the baseball team, but about all of their professional sports franchises. I would say the three pro sports franchises have not had exactly banner years this past season. But one of these years. One of these years. One of these years. We're going to explode. 
Paul Rungi at third base today, hitting 190, one homer, two RBIs. Ken Obert fell out with an injury, probably won't play again the rest of the year. Two and zero, oh, the count on Rungi. One run, two hits for Atlanta. No runs, one hit, one error for San Diego. There's Obert fell in the Braves dugout. He ended last season with an injury. We'll recall that cast on his hand at the closing part of last year. That's one department the Braves are right up there in injuries. And a lot of them this year. Mostly in the second half of the season. First half of the season was relatively injury free. And then all of a sudden, in fact, I can recall talking with trainer Dave Persley about what a fortunate year the Braves were having around the All-Star break. Not many injuries. Maybe we shouldn't have said that, that there was no wood to knock on at the point of that conversation. Three and two of the count now on Rungi. It was good to know you weren't at the bar then. <laughs> Three two pitch on the way to Rungi, hit right at the shortstop Royster. And there are two outs. Here's some halftime scores from the NFL. Minnesota leads Buffalo 20 to 3. The Chicago Bears burying Washington 31 10. Detroit leads Tampa Bay 10 6. That's still in the second period. At the half, Dallas leads Houston 7 0. At the half, Kansas City leads Seattle 21 0. At the half, New England leads the LA Raiders 20 to 14. Giants and Philadelphia scoreless at the half. And at the half, St. Louis leads Green Bay 19 0. Rick Mailer at 165 for the year. No homers, eight RBIs. Here's the 0-1 pitch toward short again. This will be an easy inning for Thurman. Almost a bad throw, but Garvey stayed with it. And it's a 1-2-3 second for Atlanta. At the end of two, it's still 1-0 Atlanta. It takes know-how and time and more than a little pride to turn an idea into a premium quality product. And there's no better example than Taylor's Pride chewing tobacco. Taylor's Pride is made from hand-selected tobaccos and the choicest flavorings blended together just right to give you that genuinely moist, fresh flavor. Taste the premium quality plug chewing tobacco. Taylor's Pride. No. Direct from the future comes the Canon T70. The T70, sleeker to hold, simpler to handle. Controls are now touch button. Data now crystal clearly displayed. Film advance now built in. The Canon T70. Now you can capture computer perfect pictures with the touch of a button. The Canon T70, touch the future now. I can trade in this old TV on a new Curtis Mathis? <laughs> Curtis Mathis National Trade-In Days are on. I can trade in this TV on a new Curtis Mathis? Bring in your old TV to your Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Center now and get up to $300 off on a stereo, TV, big screen, VCR, or camera. All with our exclusive four-year warranty and easy monthly payments. Trade in this TV? It's almost as old as he is. <laughs> We give you the scores in the afternoon, but a roundup of all the sports news, and there's so much going on with the pennant races and the NFL and college football and the beginning of the basketball training camp and the beginning of the hockey season. Sports page tonight, Kevin Christopher and Nick Charles doing their great job, and that will be a sensational show tonight. By the way, a live guest tonight coming in from the CNN headquarters in New York. New York Islander defenseman Dennis Putman will be a live guest as the NHL kicks off just in time for the baseball playoffs. Here's Tim Flattery leading off the third, taking a strike, batting 286 this year, one over 40 RBIs. He's at 286, Royster is at 287. They have shared the second base job since the trade of Alan Wiggins. So 
So they've actually, the combination has hit a little better than Wiggins hit. But they really miss Wiggins' speed. <laughs> and the 0-2 lined over third. That's a base hit into left field. Terry Harper gets it back to the infield. Two hits now off Rick Mailer. And the pitcher, Mark Thurman, will probably be called on to bunt here. Mitch Webster hit a home run for the Expos. They lead the Cardinals two to nothing in the fourth inning. Mark Salas has hit a home run for Minnesota in the second inning, and the Twins lead two nothing. Oh, and one the count on Mark Thurman. He's a 100 hitter for the year. No homers, two RBIs. Here's the 0-1. That's high. Magic number for the Dodgers, also four. They play later on this afternoon at home against the Giants. Cincinnati hanging in there, leading Houston 2-0 at the end of an inning. The Reds have had a red-hot September. But they may just run out of games. Mailer with Hubbard covering. Retires Thurman. Flannery winds up down at second. And back to the top of the order now, Jerry Royster, who grounded the second his first time. In the Eastern Division pennant race, big thing happening for the Mets today. They lead Pittsburgh three to nothing. They're playing in the top of the fourth. And the Cardinals, we told you, trailing two nothing. And if those scores hold up, long way to go in both games. The Mets will be out by three games, and at least they'd have three games in St. Louis. It's not a, a great chance, but it's better than nothing. That's a call strike nothing and one. There's the possibility and it's a, it's a very remote possibility but there is the possibility of a really wacky finish to this baseball season in the National League. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Royster. Nothing and two. Cardinals and the Mets could tie and have to have a playoff. If it gets down to the last day and Cincinnati still has a chance. They still have a game to make up with the Chicago Cubs. They could finish on Sunday, a week from today, a half game behind the Dodgers, have to fly to Chicago to make up a game. And if they win that one, they'd have a playoff <laughs> with the Dodgers. I mean, it's, it's really the, the, the playoffs, the start of the playoffs could be coming a day or two later than they should. And you know, the playoffs this year are four out of seven. We saw Royce just strike out. And, and we'll see him strike out again. Not a nice thing to do to our old buddy. Curveball. Great mail of curve going down the way. So, Pete, the way I look at it, I guess the end of the World Series could coincide exactly with the NBA All-Star game. <laughs> or the Super Bowl. It does have the potential to go into November if we get a little rain in there. A little rain along the way, and we've got baseball in November, folks. Here's Tony Gwynn, who fly to center his first time. Gwynn won't win the batting title this year as he did a year ago, but he's had a good solid season. He has an outside chance for a 200 hit season. He'd have to have a torrid final week. He has 186 hits right now. 3 0 the count. Ozzy Smith just hit a home run for the Cardinals. He's had a terrific year. He has had six home runs this year. Montreal leads a 2 1 Cardinals batting top of the fifth. Here's the 3 0, and that's over for a strike three and one. Now the 3 1 on the way, ripped foul. Tony Gwynn really uses the whole field. He'll take the outside pitch and drive it the opposite way, he'll pull the inside pitch. He's a great gap hitter too. He's a very difficult guy to set your defense against. The Braves shade him a little bit toward left. 
but don't make a mistake inside on him or he'll pull it right down the line. Hubbard will handle this one. And that's it for San Diego in the third. They get a leadoff single from Tim Flannery, but can do nothing with it. We go to the bottom of the third. Atlanta's still up by a run. Win your team an official Gatorade Thirst Quencher cooler just like the pros use. To enter or for complete details, send your team name, address, and phone number. Trudell's putting her all in this routine. And the judges love her. Gatorade is first aid. Smith moves ahead in what appears to be a one-man race. Gatorade is first aid. Double play ball. Andrews to Wiley to Davis. When you exercise, you lose potassium, fluids, minerals. Gatorade Thirst Quencher helps put them back fast. That's why the pros drink it. It's thirst aid. Gatorade is thirst aid for the deep down body thirst. For everyone working to keep the customer satisfied. This bud's for you. Nobody else can do the job the way you do. So here's to you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. The Andy Griffith Show. Yeah, my favorite episode is... No, not yet, Don. They'll have to wait to find out which episodes were chosen by the cast as their all-time favorites. Andy Griffith's Silver Anniversary Special, Thursday night at 8.05 Eastern. On Superstation, WTBS. In the bottom of the third, Paul Zabella, Glenn Hubbard, and Dale Murphy do up. And that's astounding. This ball club with Dale Murphy, Bob Horner, the power in the middle of the batting order, playing in this ballpark, the last thing you would think this club would have happen to them would be a lopsided losing record at home like that. Yeah, that's a, of all the things that are bad about the Braves, that probably is the worst to be 18 games under at home. And it tells you that not only is the pitching poor on the Braves, but the Braves have to get a lot more power for next year. When you play in this small ballpark, if you don't live by the sword you're going to die by the sword and the Braves have this year. Paul Zavella takes low and inside ball one. Zavella doubled his first time up and scored the only run of the game. One ball one strike. We'll be in Houston tomorrow night Pasquale Perez against Nolan Ryan. Steve Bedrosian goes against Charlie Kerfeld on Tuesday afternoon in Houston. Then it's off to Los Angeles. Here's the 2 1 delivery, and that's a strike on the outside corner, 2 and 2. If the Dodgers haven't clinched it by Wednesday, Braves have an opportunity to play spoiler in there. Two game series with the Dodgers. Down the right field line, but that's going to drop foul. And it stays at two and two. Halftime score from St. Louis. Cardinals leading 19 to nothing. Philadelphia Eagles have taken a 3 0 lead over the Giants that game in the third quarter. He was scoreless in the first half. Tim Flannery to his right. Throws out Zavella one down. Now Glenn Hubbard who had a bunch single his first time up. The Reds now three to nothing over Houston at the end of two. Outside ball one. Five in a row have been retired now by Mark Thurman. Four of them on ground balls. It is two and zero. Oh.
Here's the 2-0 pitch to Hubbard. Fastball taken for a strike two and one. Thurman, a native of Houston, Texas, still lives there in the offseason. Turned 29 a couple of weeks ago. High in the air, but straight away center field. Not a whole lot of carry to this one. Kevin McReynolds battles that sun a bit, but makes the catch. Two down. Now the center fielder, Dale Murphy, who picked up his 109th RBI of the season when he hit into a 6-4 force play in the first. Murphy has already established the new season high in home runs with 37. 121 is his RBI high. That came a couple of years ago. Here's the 1-0 from Thurman. It misses inside 2-0. Well, we mentioned the Yankees are winning. Don Mattingly has another home run, but Toronto keeps on putting on the pressure. Toronto has scored three in the top of the first at Milwaukee, and they have the bases loaded with two out. Swing and a miss to count two and one. You know, you always find yourself when you look over at the other league, always usually rooting for one team or another because you know a couple guys on right. that team. It's hard to do between those clubs. you got Bobby Cox and Jeff Burrows and Cito Gaston and John Sullivan, guys like that over at Toronto. You got Phil Necro and Joe Colley, Brian Fisher. People like that over at New York. Hard to root for either one of those against the other. I'd like to see them both make it. Guess they won't, though, huh? No. No, I think Toronto has a pretty good chance. <laughs> yeah, they sure look like they do. They really do. One thing, rainouts really kill you. We talked about the Cardinals yesterday, Pete, in your absence. Doubleheaders are tough to win. The Yankees have a doublehead against the Orioles. And they really have to win both games, obviously. It's tough to do. Here's the 2 2. Struck him out. Got him with a low fastball. That's the first strikeout for Thurman. He has the second straight 1 2 3 inning. We've completed three here in Atlanta with our score Braves 1, San Diego nothing. Here's John Sterling. Now look at that graphic for a minute. Harvey takes it outside. Mailer has not allowed the leadoff man on, but boy, the first two games of the series, first guy up, usually base it. Garvey bunts, and he's out of there, and he won't do that again. Garvey has no speed at all, trying to surprise the Braves with a bunt, and is he sorry? He didn't get his three good hacks like he normally does. You'll see Garvey do this every now and then, trying to put one down that third base side because the third baseman always plays him deep. The funny thing is he had a low curveball to bunt, which is a lot easier than bunting a fastball. He chose the right pitch, just popped it up. Here's Greg Nettles with one away. We're in the top of the fourth. The Braves have a 1-0 lead. Mailer trying for number 18. Well, that, at least, Pete, would be exciting. If he could win 18, then he gets a start in L.A. And if he wins that, then I know Bobby Wan would start him in San Francisco. Even on two days rest. This may not be the most exciting end to a home season, but boy, we have the most beautiful day you've ever seen. Braves lead at one nothing. We're in the top of the fourth with one out. Mailer's fastball down low, two and zero. That was really a crime that Mailer couldn't get the win in Cincinnati the other night. Milt Thompson came in under a pop fly and short left, and simply fell down on the turf. That'll be the second out of the inning. That's one who takes it. You know, Pete, that Bob Horner has either made none or maybe one error at first base in all the games he's played there. He has adapted to first base. He really has. Game. He looks like he's been over there all his life. And what's funny about that is they tried the same experiment with Horner back in about 1979 or 80, and it didn't work at all. He was very much not at home over there. But all of a sudden this time, when they moved him over there, he looked like he'd played there forever. Kennedy takes it down low ball one. Pete Van Weer and John Sterling with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium our final home game of the year. And then it's off for to Houston tomorrow evening in Houston and Tuesday afternoon. 
play Wednesday and Thursday night. San Francisco Friday night. Saturday and Sunday afternoon. And it's basketball and football. Kennedy tried to time the slow curve, nubbed it foul, so we can't run into. Kansas City trying to come back in their game. They picked up a run in the third, still batting, still trailing Minnesota 2-1. Two, two outs for the Padres, base is empty. And a 2-2 count on Terry Kennedy. Kansas City scoring runs faster than we can keep up with here. It's now 2-2. Gets Minnesota. And the count goes full on two. Three and two. Magic number for the Blue Jays, the Cardinals, the Dodgers, four. Any combination of their wins and the other team's losses. There's a base hit to right field. And Kennedy is a line drive hitter. He gets his second hit of the day. He doubled the left, now single to right, and the two outs. There's Carmelo Martinez. Well, the Yankees have to win a doubleheader today. It's, it's really amazing when you put in that position, but of course you put in that position by losing games during the year. Because Toronto has scored six runs in the top of the first. They lead 6-0. Milwaukee coming to bat. And if Toronto wins that game, their magic number will be three. And you can see if the Yankees... I'll tell you one thing about that. Martinez takes a curveball outside. If the Yankees don't win a doubleheader and Toronto wins that game, the magic number would be two. Then Toronto would have to win just one of the three games against the Yanks at home. And so the Toronto win, the Yankee loss on that same day, and Blue Jays have won the fight. Pete, I would say that that group, and I know their GM, is as nice a guy as you could ever meet. Pat Gale is a very, very talented young executive. Used to be with the Yanks. They built that franchise, you hate to say perfectly, but about as perfectly as you'd want. They, they lost for a lot of years and only invested in young players. That will end the inning. Murph in center field misjudged it, now comes in and makes the catch. He went back to it. Had come in. No runs on a hit for the Padres. They leave one at the end of three and a half. It's one nothing, hot Atlanta. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. <laughs> Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first thing in taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Well, give me a light. No, uh, Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. How many shakes can you get from one disposable shake? Monday. makes a sharp, long-lasting disposable quite like Saturday. How many shicks does your disposable give you? Dad, send the money by noon, but you won't be coming to my graduation in June. Send the money today, or your father and I couldn't be... Oh, washed away. Darling, I've run into a little trouble. Could you send $150 on the double? To send someone money fast, come to Western Union. We'll make sure it gets to any of our 9,000 locations, usually in 15 minutes or less. That's okay. I'll get the door. Western Union, the fastest way to send money. No matter what the score, there's one sports team you can count on. Sports Tonight, every night at 11.30 p.m. Eastern on CNN. Beautiful Sandra Wilson has dropped in the booth. You wouldn't believe the conversation that's gone on, but that's why we're in the television business, because we communicate so well. <laughs> Sandra said, where are you going after the game? We said, Houston. She said, the one on West Paces or... 
that's a local place here in town, as is West Pace as well. Enough about Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Hornet takes a strike. It's okay, Sandra. We need all the material we can get at this stage of the year. 31 and 49 at home, I guess so. Horns takes it low, and the count evens. Tommy Herr, another home run, his eighth of the year. St. Louis leads Montreal 3-2. I think he's going to be the MVP of the National League. So many great candidates, and he's one of them, and you might be right. And boy, does that team have a lot of class. The Cardinals have really answered every charge. The Mets have had a great year now. Every time they charge the Cardinals, the Cardinals behind in a ball game come up with the runs in the sixth, seventh, and eighth to win. Three and one. And you know, Pete, you can't do that year after year. The team does wins games like right. that one year. They usually don't win games like that two years in a row. We're in the bottom of the fourth. We're laid back and happy today. It's one nothing Atlanta. Mela goes for his 18. There's a strike and the count three and two. Well, guess the reverse has happened of what a lot of people forecast would happen when free agency came along. It used to be if you had a team that was second or third to the same team every year, there's very little you could do about trying to improve your club unless you had a farm system that was full of top prospects or unless you could make a deal that would bring over a player that could really help you. You kind of had to wait until you could develop somebody to fill up whatever weakness you had. Now you can go out and get a guy right away, sign a guy from the free agent market or get an unhappy player in a second division team who wants to be traded try to pick him up you can you can improve yourself very quickly these days and one other point too that Pete Rose made during the year Hugh Alexander the Philly Super Scott made it on the star of the game show last night that strikeout by the way of Horner was the second for Thurman and Terry Hopper whiffs at one of Thurman's changes Pete Rose said during the year each team in baseball is just three players away. The divisions are not as great between the teams. And if you add three good players, or three of your best players go down in one form or another, that changes the structure. That's what we're seeing in baseball. And I think it's good for the game, by the way. It's been very tough for the Braves this year. The Pirates came back with three in the bottom of the fourth, so the Mets lead Pittsburgh 4 3 at the end of four in a quote unquote must game for the Mets. One and two on Terry Harper. One out, no one on base in the bottom of the fourth. It is one nothing Atlanta. Upstairs, two and two. By the way, your football game next weekend is Indiana Northwestern. And how about the Wildcats winning two ball games already? How about Indiana winning three? <laughs> well, you're gonna have a it's gonna be a good ball game. You're darn right, it's gonna be a good ball game. You've had some good ones. Hit in the air to center field. Kevin McReynolds. Everyone is misjudging. Fly balls in. Did he trap it? He trapped it. Now the throw back to first, and Harper gets back. You saw Murph at the close of the top of the fourth go way back, and then had to dash in. McReynolds did the same thing. There are no clouds today, and maybe that high sky fooling the center fielders. I think two things. The high sky, number one, it's a pretty bright sun shining, and also the wind has changed. It was blowing out toward left center field when the game began. It is now blowing directly in from right center field. We've seen kind of the same way in two innings. That's a base hit, by the way. And let's dredge up this cliche, maybe for the final time this year. We only have a week to go. I don't think we should dredge it up any further. But you know what, Pete Van Weeren? That'll look like a line drive in the box. Oh, we can use that once more. Okay, one more time. Maybe Thursday. <laughs> hey, you must be proud about Navy. How about that upset? You, you were telling me last week about how gutty they play. They're a much smaller team than other teams. That beat Virginia pretty good. Oh. This is a big upset. 1-0 on Rick Cerrone with Harper at first base and one man out here on the bottom of the fourth. And Carol from Delta comes at the booth to say hello. The blue eyes and the rest of her tears. Harper goes and he has hung up the drive. Finally. 
<laughs> the Braves had a rundown last night. Beat the you miss. They must have exchanged the ball 20 times. We'll watch this one again. Well, the Padres were able to get four of the infielders involved here. Count the catcher as an infielder, which he really is. That went two, six, three, four. It was a hit and run, and Thurman happened to fire fastball so close to Cerrone he had to get out of the way, and Harper was hung out. Oh, two way. And the 2 0 is foul back. Would you say the scoring on that play was? 2 6, 3 4. Last night, I'm going to look this up for you. Don't want you to miss an ex single exciting moment. Miguel DeLanay came in as a pinch runner in the 12th inning. Lovacqua double came as a pinch runner. First pitch, the bunt attempt was missed, and he was hung up. Two six five, four two four. <laughs> Sir Hone walks. <laughs> then went out later. The next guy doubles, and they don't score a run. The next guy walks, and Nettles hit a ball to the fence. Murphy caught it with his back to the fence and didn't score. Then the bottom of the twelfth, the Braves had the bases loaded, no one out, and didn't score. And wound up losing in thirteen. Gotta love those scoreless innings. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We duly noted that you weren't here, by the way. I'm sure you did. Brad Commons goes up two out, Cerrone at first base. That's the second walk given up by Thurman. Braves lead at 1 nothing. We're in the bottom of the fourth. I want to congratulate the parents of our. Brilliant director Rick Rayford. First of all, want to congratulate him for having Rick. Brad Commons fouls it off. But to Dick and Donna Rayford, they're celebrating today their 39th year of wedded bliss. I'm not going to do the old line. Happy anniversary to both of them. Dick and Donna Rayford, 39 years of marriage and their anniversary today. Delay steal for Cerrone, and he's thrown out. That's not exactly his bag, as they say. Cerrone has thrown out 2 4. The Braves ran the bases pitifully that inning. They get no runs on a base hit and leave no one. And at the end of four, it's 1 0 Atlanta. This buds for all you guys who know it's how you play the game. Yeah, this buds for you. There's no one else who makes the way you do. Come your way. Come your way. Come Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This buds for you. Ketchup stands for this kind of thickness with this kind of taste. Heinz. No contest. Heinz is the one, the delicious one. Heinz is the big, rich one. Weekdays, see up-to-the-minute news, the latest via satellite. See it first with Mary Alice Williams and Lou Waters on Newswatch at 5 p.m. Eastern on CNN. Hey, Duffer, next week on Super Football Saturday Night, Jim Everett launches an airstrike aiming to lift Purdue past Minnesota and their ace quarterback, Sweet Feet Ricky Foggy. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Super Football Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Super Station next week. We go to the top half of the fifth inning from Atlanta. The Braves lead at 1 0. Nice to have you along on a really lovely afternoon here. At home, we'll be going away for a week. I know one thing we need to do before we move over to radio, John. Mm -hmm. Braves are going to draw 1.3 million plus this year for what has really been a disastrous season for the Braves. And for you, 1.3 who 
came out in support of this ball club, the Braves really do thank you on this final home day of the year. Well, we were talking about it yesterday, too, Peter, on uh, Fan Appreciation Night. We really appreciate the fans. I mean that. I'll tell you why. Because the fans have been so lenient with the Braves and, and with us. And a million three fifty. That ain't bad. That ain't bad for a team that's gone 31 and 49 at home. So we thank you. That's pop foul by McReynolds. We'll go down the right field line out of play. McReynolds over one. By the way, we want to wish a very happy birthday to Misty Peebles, who is nine years old today. Misty is the daughter of one of our top camera people, Susan Peebles, who's running our high home camera. We'll get a shot of Susan soon. That is smoked. And it is gone. Home run McReynolds to tie the game. That's number 15 for Kevin. And the ball game tied at one. I don't know if that was going out. That was hit so hard. A line drive which cleared the fence. One hop off the scoreboard out in left center field. He has some 75 RBIs for the year. That's a good year for run production for McReynolds. And you wonder how many he would have had had he hit in the 270s as he did last year because last year he also drove in 75 runs hitting about 40 points higher. Well the ball game tied at one. Here's Tim Flannery. He takes a strike. I can see Susan from here running my own. Hey, Susan. I thought Susan was nine years old. That's amazing she has a daughter who's nine. Well, there's the throw, Susan Peebles. The curveball, low tune one to Flannery. Milwaukee did not score on the bottom of the first. That's hit hard, but Hubbard makes a good stab. He's been outstanding at second base all year. Tough to recall Hubbard making an error. He has made nine this year, but that's a very low number when you consider the number of games he plays on this infield, which yeah. gives yes. give you so many bad hops. This was not an easy ball to handle. This hop, a little tough. But Hubbard's been making these plays all year long. That is chop foul down the first baseline off the bat. Thurman, you mentioned about the infield. This is a very tough infield to play. It was in great shape at the beginning of the year, but then the combination of football and the, the Georgia Sun, you can't alleviate the sun baking that infield. That's, that's like playing on cement, as Gary Templeton found out last night. I mentioned Milwaukee didn't score. Toronto leads 6 0 at the end of one. Thurman takes a strike. And they've got one going in Montreal this afternoon. Tim Wallach has just hit a two run homer in the sixth inning, his 22nd of the year. Expos back on top of that game now, 4 3 over the Cardinals. Well, the Cardinals trail 4 3, and the Mets lead 4 3. Met game is in the fifth, and the Cardinal game in the sixth. One and two on Thurman. One away, no one on base. Top of the fifth inning. Two. On deck leadoff hitter Jerry Royster. Pete Van Weer and John Sterling with you from Atlanta. And Ernie and Skip will come on over in the bottom half. And the count runs full three and two. The Eastern Times on the road trip 8:35, and then Tuesday 1:35 from Houston, 10:30 both nights from L.A. 11.05 Friday night from San Francisco, 4.05 Saturday. Mailer will feel that. See you right. 4.05 Saturday and Sunday, Eastern Time at 3 p.m. Then we'll fly back. And we'll fly back. Hope we'll be able to get off the plane. Well, two way and no one on base here is Zafrog, Jerry Royster.
Brad Cummins will make the grab in right field to end the inning. Pondre is tied on the 15th home run of the year off the bat of Kevin McReynolds and leave no one. And at the end of four and a half innings of play, the Padres won, the Braves won. Caring for people isn't something new in today's Air Force Reserve. They've been doing it for a long time. Hello, I'm Morgan Brittany. Air Cummins will lead off to the Braves. He lined to right his first time. Don Mattingly, his second home run of the day, a two-run job. He now has 139 RBIs, and the Yankees are winning 4-0 in the first of two against Baltimore. That's a great advertisement for interleague play. Wouldn't you like to see Don Mattingly swing the bat for real a few times? I would. Thurman to comments. Got a 1-1 game. Pretty well touched off in the right center. McReynolds battling that wind, so is Gwen, and it's McReynolds who makes the catch run away. Comments is retired. Well, I have decided on my vote for most valuable brave here at the ballpark in Atlanta, and that's Lauren, the bartender in the press room. I couldn't have made it without him this year. Here's Paul Rungi. One ball, no strikes. Inside the bag. Let's see if he can get a double. Nope. Martinez gets it back in in a hurry. But the go-ahead run at first with one out. Here's Rick Naylor. <laughs> Big surprises brewing in the NFL today. Kansas City 28 nothing over Seattle in the third quarter. The bunt will. Darrell Strawberry's had a two run homer. It's now 6 3 Mets over the Pi Pirates in the sixth. Seattle has gotten on the board at Kansas City. It's 28 7 in that game. Chicago 38, the Redskins 10. Wow. The Bears must be really good. Why don't they call that a balk, Ernie? He balks every time he throws to first pick. They're letting him get away with it. You're supposed to step directly at the base, and he's stepping cross lots, as they say, halfway between first and home. Whoa, he almost threw that ball in the right field. Good sacrifice bunt by me. It goes 1 4. Cardinals in Montreal in the seventh, tied now 4 4. Tommy Hur, a two run homer in that game. Ozzie Smith has one as well. Paul Zuvella bats with a runner at second and two out. Doubled and bounced to second. Well, the singing vendor is pumped up today for the finale. <laughs> Closing day. Zavala at 2.32 for the year with three runs driven in. No one oh. Two balls, no strikes. 
Toronto 6 1 over Milwaukee after two in American League play. The Yankees are going to win their first to two. California leads Cleveland 5 2 after four. Kansas City, Minnesota 2 2 after four. Three and 0 to Zavella. And Glenn Hubbard is next. Mitch Webster and Tim Wallach have homers for Montreal in their game with the Cardinals. On four straight, Zavella walks, two on, two up. Third walk for Thurman. Hubbard has singled and he has flied to center. The single was a bunt. Rick Rayford, our director this afternoon. Nancy Diamond's assistant Glenn is our producer. Nancy is in charge of graphics and the Diamond household. Leon Cobb, the technical director. Ken Nolan, our associate director. Stephanie Bradley, Marty Beeson running graphics. Steve Finney is our graphics coordinator. Cardinals killing Green Bay in football, 33-7. Giants lead the Eagles 10 3 in the third. Five inches of snow in Denver, where Miami's going to play. Nettles backs up, fields, and gets the force. Boy, he's still a good third baseman. The inning is over. The Braves leave a couple of runners. One hit, no runs, no errors, two left. At the end of five, we're tied 1 1. Light. Go. Uh, light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Thank you. Because everything else is just a light. Introducing Footwork. Footwork, your ultimate weapon against athlete's foot. Footwork cures the pain and itch of athlete's foot, then prevents its return. Get new Footwork now. New Old Spice Solid keeps guys so much drier, they might give up their men and antiperspirant mid-stick. Hey, Bronco, here's a present. Hardly used. Compared to Menon, new Old Spice antiperspirant keeps you 35% drier. Switch to Old Spice now. Take my Menon, please. The Delta Professionals always make you feel like you're on top of the world. Delta gets you there. Monday's headlines Sunday night, plus timely guests and features you won't want to miss. Catch the sports page. 10.05 Eastern Time on the Superstation tonight. We go to the sixth inning, top of the order for the Pandre. Oklahoma, Minnesota turned out to be a heck of a football game last night. 0-1 oh the count. So Minnesota shows that they're a good football team, and you'll see them again next Saturday night against Purdue from the Metrodome. Hubbard Fields, Gwynn is up. And Steve Garvey is the batter. Garvey has struck out 
and is fouled to the catcher. Into the alley and left center. A roll to the fence and Garvey will be at second. The go ahead run in scoring position with one out for Nettles and Kennedy. Kansas City still batting in the fifth. They have a run in and lead Minnesota 3 2. California now with a 7 2 lead and they're still batting in the fifth against Cleveland. Meadows has tapped to the mound and bounced to first. Oh. We'll be with you at 835 Eastern Time tomorrow 135 Tuesday 1030 on Wednesday 1030 on Thursday 1105 on Friday 405 on Saturday and three o'clock on Sunday. Horner steps on the bag. Nettles is retired. The runner is at third. Here's Kennedy who's hit the ball hard twice. He's two out of two. They have a base open. Let's see what they choose to do here. They're choosing not to walk it. That surprises me. Yep. Montreal bats in the bottom of the seventh. They trail the Cardinals now 5 4. to the count to the Padre catcher rumors swirling around that Kennedy is available Padres have some young catchers they feel can take his place take him take him strike out on a great change by Mayler yeah I wouldn't mind having him either Rick records his third strikeout one hit no runs no errors one left bottom half of the sixth inning rolls around we're tied 1-1 is in your hands. Panasonic presents Omnimovie, a camera and video recorder in one. Capture magic moments forever. Get a close-up, Joe. Yeah. yeah. Omnimovie uses full-size VHS tapes, plays Hollywood movies, or your own. Yes, right, Santa. Don't miss a single Omnimovie magic moment from Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Just think what you could do with all that thick, rich Heinz ketchup in this supremely squeezable bottle. Here comes the one. Here comes the one. Heinz is the thick, rich, squeezable one. There's only one ketchup with the flavor point on. So thick, so rich, so thick. Heinz is the one. A delicious one. Heinz is the She challenged the state of Tennessee and put criminal justice on trial. They warned her. They are going to get you. Threatened her. They tried to silence her. That's how badly they wanted her out. You were a troublemaker. That's how hard she fought back. Sissy Spacek, Marie, the explosive true story, rated PG-13. Now playing at specially selected theaters. A WTBS special presentation, a telethon for Mexican earthquake relief. Mexico, we're with you. That's tonight at 8.05 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Superstation. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Dale Murphy will lead it on for Atlanta. Murph drove in a run with an infield out in the first. He struck out in the third. 
And he hits a little flare in the short right for a hit. So Dale is at first with nobody out, and Bob Horner is the batter. After the game tonight, Paul Ryden will have the sports report with all the baseball and football scores and highlights from some of each. So stay tuned to CBS. Runner at first, nobody out. Horner has reached on an air and he has struck up. Foul pass third. That's a balk, not called. to the count to the Atlanta captain. Cincinnati has scored two more and they're still batting in the sixth. They lead the Astros five nothing. Did Pete and John discuss the Larry King show today on NBC? Catch out nothing happened. Larry had a among other things on his segment stated that the Braves are going to acquire Ron Say during the offseason. So he asked Braves general manager John Mullen about it. He was absolutely shocked. He knew. Says there's nothing at all to that for whatever it's worth. One and two, the count. Then Mr. King said that Andre Dawson is going to go to the Cubs shortly after the season for Leon Durham and could be other players involved in that. Double play ball, five. He can't get it out of his glove, four. And that made him safe, and Murphy absolutely destroyed Tim Flannery at second base. Ball hit to third. Flannery had a little trouble. Nettles did, had a little trouble getting it out of his glove. That allowed Murphy to come on down and Knock him down, the throw is high. Flannery wound up standing on his head after that collision at second base. That Dawson Durham thing, I believe the Cubs with absolutely no left hand. Another thing that Mr. King said was uh, Dawson would like to play in a ballpark that has at least the home games on on regular grass. He's been bothered. Uh, he's had bad legs and playing on artificial turf hurts him. He has no cartilage left at all in the one knee. They tell me. He's a gamer though, boy. He's a good ball player. He certainly is. And after the rumor started, he went out and hit three homers at Wrigley Field. One game, two in one inning, six RBIs in the same inning. Any slugger would love to play at Wrigley Field. Or here. Yes. Now the third base umpire, Ed Montague, comes up with a ball that somehow had found its way out on the field from the Padre dugout. And now we're ready to go once again on the 1 1 to Terry Harper. Upstairs, 2 and 1. We love to spread the rumors along, or send them along, but that came on national TV today. So we thought we'd pass it along sure. on, national, on our national TV. Yes. Of course, Larry also first the, the two ones outside. <laughs> what did he call? He, he called the show he was on what CBS calls their show, NFL Today or whatever it is. <laughs> 
And he's on CNN. Yeah. He must not have one of those exclusive clauses. No, he's yeah. one of the game. Like we do. <laughs> In the short center, Flannery's in a world of trouble, but Gwen calls him off and makes the count. Two out for Rick Cerrone. Kansas City and Minnesota 3-3 in the fifth. Minnesota still batting. They've tied that game. The Yankees beat Baltimore 4-0. Joe Colley and Dave Rigetti combined on a three-hitter. Yep, it. it's not Joe Colley. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the first of two. They've got another one to follow. Last strike, 0-1. One pitch. Here it is. Curve low. It's one and one. And the singing vendor's got him going. This bud for you. He's got that down cold. Maybe he and my dad will combine on the next. Bud Man commercial. Fly ball down the right field line. Gwen a long way to go. He gets there and the inning is over. So the Braves leadoff single comes to nothing in the sixth. One hit, no runs, no errors, a runner left. Braves have left five through six. We go to the seventh. Tied 1-1. At Delta, we could talk about our airplanes, some of the best maintained, most modern birds in the sky, or our schedules, over 1,500 flights a day worldwide, or our flight centers, the airports of the future. But none of that is as important as people. And when it comes to the Delta professionals, the people who make Delta as great as it is, well, one smile is worth a thousand words. Delta gets you there. I found a place where we can put up a cabin. I'd like to see it. When you've got to go places where the road comes later, whistle for the 1985 Toyota 4x4. The most powerful small truck ever built with the highest running ground clearance of any small 4x4. No wonder it's the best-selling small And Rachel Stiles, Ted Turner's baseball secretary, down in the owner's box. boy today is Bill Merriam's boy Josh. Bill's our TBS production manager. <laughs> Martinez made an error in the first inning. He was really on the racks about them. Since it hasn't rained in a couple of weeks, he was a dry Martinez on the right. Thought we might get through nine one no. time. No, no, never have. It never have. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. 8.35 is TV time tomorrow from the Dome. Rez and Ryan will pitch. It'd be good to see Dick Wagner again, see what changes he has wrought in the Houston scheme of things to this point. Just missed with a curveball. So Martinez is a first, first walk surrendered by Mailer. And here's McReynolds who had a change right out of here his last time. Miguel Delaunay will come in to run for the Padres, and if things stay as they've been, he'll get picked off first baseman. 
got picked off second as a pinch runner last night. Well, that's got to be the worst feeling in the world. Get in a game for five seconds to get picked off because of your base running ability. But he can fly. Inside, one ball, no strikes. on his stomach. Things have sort of slowed down here at the ballpark, folks. Toronto's changed pitchers in the third. They had a 6-0 lead. Now it's 6-1, and Milwaukee's still batting in that third inning. Boy, if they blow that one, panic is liable to set in. Again, the throw to first. Come on, Rick! Tampa Bay is not going to win today either. Detroit leads them 23-9 in football. As predicted, Ottawa leads Montreal 20 to 7 at the half in Canadian football league play. Who cares? The 2 0 pitch. Right through there is taking all the way, 2 and 1. If you're going to hit and run, this is a pretty good pitch to do it on. Nothing in yet on the Hamilton Calgary game. They're not hitting and running, it's 3 and 1. And we have no National Hockey League exhibition scores to pass along yet either. Three balls and a strike. Speaking of hockey, who is it? Dennis Poplin on the sports page tonight? At 10.05 here on CBS. For the first time this afternoon, our cameras are going to swing to the bullpen. We've got McCullers, I believe, starting to throw. He walked him. Two on, nobody out. Two successive walks for Miller. And our camera, as Ernie predicted, does in fact swing to the bullpen where Lance McCullers is warming up. No one has thrown for Atlanta today. That is extremely rare in the month of September. Now a left-hander joins McCullers. I think it's Craig Lefferts, but I'm not sure. Tim Flannery is the batter with two on and nobody out. And they try that play again. I'm wrong. It's Bob Patterson, the left-hander in the bullpen to the Padre. That's a great-looking play where the shortstop breaks toward third and the second baseman covers. The only trouble with it is it never works. Yeah. Looks good, though. They try it again and it still doesn't work. Looks good though. Yeah, it does. It looks people running in all directions. Not just the Braves, it's very seldom does it work with anybody. We saw it work once in spring training. But it is an effort to just hold him a second there and possibly have him break two steps because the shortstop's breaking for third. Then he's dead. The bunts foul. Zavella was covering third. Montreal has scored three in the seventh and they're still batting and they lead the Cardinals 7-5. Pittsburgh's creeping up, aren't they? It's like 6-4 in the eighth. With the Mets batting in the top of the eighth. Now the Braves' bullpen is busy. Camp is the right-hander, forced to the southpaw. Try that thing again. It doesn't work, but what it does do is cut down on the runner's lead, and that's probably as much what they intend with it as anything else. Just put it in his mind that the second baseman hasn't broken to cover first yet. Hey. 
started to bunt, took it low and inside. Count evens, one and one. Delaunay at second. With Reynolds at first, nobody out. Hits are even at five. He bunts a foul back, a ball and two strikes. Kurt Babakwa will pinch hit next, or at least he's on deck swinging the bat. He would pinch hit for Thurman. Stride, but missed upstairs with the change. It's two and two. <laughs> Full count, three and two. Now Dick Williams has a decision to make. Does he send his running? Milwaukee's got the bases loaded, two in, two out, and they trail Toronto 6-3 in the third. They're running. Line, great play by Hubbard. He's out there. He's out there. Holy smoke, what a play. That's as exciting and great a play as you'll see. You just won't see one like this anymore. Hubbard diving for the ball, knocked it to Zavella to get the force, and then Zool throw to first. And the throw to first was in time. Look at this. Play it again, Sam. That is some play. And we will. Ball is sharply hit. Hubbard diving for it, just trying to keep it in the infield, and hits it off the heel of his glove over to Zavella to Horner. Now Jerry Royster is heading toward the plate, but it's not his turn. It looks like with two out and a runner at third, they're going to go back to Thurman. All right. That's him. Yeah. Yeah. So all the bullpen activity comes to nothing. Yeah. Yeah, not a bad idea. He was going to bunt his way on. He missed a terrible pitch. It's 0 1. So thanks to a brilliant play by Hubbard Mailer with a great chance to get out of it here, he's got the pitcher hitting. Runner at third and two out. Oh and two. He's out of it. Foul tipped into a strikeout. Number four for Mailer. No hits, no runs, no errors. A runner left. We go to the bottom of the seven. Thanks, Glenn Hubbard. Still tied 1-1. Roaches, public enemy number one. They come out at night and scurry all over your kitchen carrying germs and diseases. Roaches leave filthy droppings behind them. They crawl over food or even creep into your shoes. Yuck! But how can you get rid of them? You've tried smelly spray insecticides, but roaches avoid the sprayed areas and keep coming back. Now there's a solution. Roach Kill, the amazing odorless powder with a double your money back guarantee. In tests at a leading university, the powder in Roach Kill proved 99% effective with only one application. Roachkill was far superior to six other insecticides tested. Roachkill is easy to use. Just squeeze the powder from the Roachkill bottle behind appliances and other hiding places. Roaches can't smell Roachkill, so they don't flee to other parts of your house. 
They walk through the roach kill powder, which clings to their legs, and carry it back to their hidden nests within the walls. There it kills not just the midnight crawlers, but the whole colony that breeds new roaches. Roach kill is so incredibly effective that using a bottle is directed if it doesn't kill every last roach in your house. Simply return it after a two-week trial and we'll send you double your money back. Think of it, a product so amazing that it has a double your money back guarantee. It's not sold in stores, so pick up your phone and order now. Most orders shipped in 24 hours. To order by Visa, MasterCard, or COD, call toll-free 1-800-257-1234. To avoid COD charges, send check or money order for $9.95 plus $2 shipping and handling to Roachkill, Post Office Box 7500, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. Remember, that's 1-800-257-1234. Don Knotts salutes 25 years of Mayberry Mania, an Andy Griffith Silver Anniversary Special, Thursday at 8.05 p.m. Eastern. On Superstation, WTBS. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. You see that Jerry Davis takes the place of Carmelo Martinez in left field. For the Padres, the Braves will send the lower end of their batting order to the plate against Mark Thurman, who struck out to end the inning and took a little extra time Getting out there, but he's ready to go now. Comments will lead it off and bring you the rest of the way on Braves Television. Here once again, Ernie Johnson. Uh, thank you, Skip. Comments. Followed by Rungi and then Mailer. Rad is over two with a line drive to right and the fly ball to center. Each team with five hits. The Padres guilty of one error. Here's the first pitch. Inside ball one. The one out. Outside ball two. Two all. Got it over. Cincinnati's playing great baseball, but the Dodgers just won't stub their toe. Reds going for their fourth in a row today. Winning easily right now. There's a base at the left field. Common starts the seventh with a single to left. Now Paul Rungi. Cincinnati's five, Houston nothing in the eighth. Dodgers play later. Magic number going into today's games. St. Louis, four. The Dodgers, magic number four. And Toronto, four. Kaminsk is back. Rungi will probably bunt. He hit safely last time up. Yeah. Missed it. the 0 one instead the first tries it again same result Curve ball over. Rungi didn't like it. He's behind now. They might take the bunt off. He's looking at Bobby Dews, who got a sign from Bobby Wine. And they pitch out. Last year, Andy Hawkins had a 
great postseason play. He pitched well in the playoffs and pitched well in the World Series. He went on to have a good year this year. He's 117. Thurman, on the other hand, after having a good year last year, did not pitch well in the championship series or the World Series. It seems to have some effect on his performance this year as he's under 500. His ERA last year was in the twos. And he was over 500. Now the 2 2 once again. 3 and 2. What if they'll send comments? Rungy wonders too. Three balls, two strikes. There's nobody out. Commons has good speed. He's stolen nine bases. Looks like he's going. He's going. And that's driven toward the gap. Left center field. In for a base hit. All the way to the wall. Commons will score. Paul Rungy. Has made it two to one. <laughs> Rungi's at second base. The batter be Rick Mailer. It's now two to one. There you see it again is a fastball down a little bit. He hit a pretty good pitch and he hit it hard. It's Bunner's foul. Barungi a third double of the year. The third RBI. Braves beat the Padres last Sunday. Might as well do it two in a row as Mailer talks it over with Dews. You would feel that he would bunt, and Garvey thinks so, and he's shallow at first. Nettles will charge from third. The bunt is foul again. Oh and two. Zabella's on deck. Giants at Los Angeles. It'll be Mason against Bob Welch. Welch is going for his 13th win of the year. He's lost only four times. To simplify that magic number business. That's at four. The bun attempt is foul. That's a strikeout. Bunning with two strikes, fouling a strikeout, holding at second. Rungi. Magic number of four. In other words, if the Cardinals win four more games, doesn't make any difference what New York does. Same story with the Dodgers and Toronto. If they can win all the rest of their games, they're going to come up short. Paul Zabella with a double and a ground out plus a walk. Rungi's back. The on deck hitter is Hubbard. Trying to think of that other banner that was so cute we had out here. This one we have out here today rates right up there with one of the top banners of the year hanging on the left field foul pole. Wait till next year, next year, next year. <laughs> That's a classic. We put a couple of other ones that rate up there. The 1 0. -oh. 
One involving Ted Turner that was prominent out here in the round of league. Ted, don't buy CBS, buy a pitcher. <laughs> Ruggie's at second. Teammate at Richmond a couple of years back. Zabella takes the strike. The colors are throwing in their bullpen again. There you see the young fireballer who got in last night's game. Now a 2 1. Got a little scroogey that missed with it. 3 and 1. It's all over a week from today in Candlestick Park, San Francisco. 85 goes in the history books. A low fastball over, three and two. Actually, it's been over for quite a while when you get right down to it. <laughs> Payoff. Fouled away. The attendance today should bring it up to about 1,350,000. And on behalf of Ted Turner and the whole gang, we thank you for your attendance, your patience, your understanding. Could have been a lot worse. A lot worse reaction from the fans with the season the Braves have had. 3-2. Got him on a breaking ball. Zavella out of there. Now Glenn Hubbard. I wonder if he loaded that one up, but Boston really dropped out on that thing. By the way, the Pirates have scored two in the eighth to tie the Mets 6 6, and they're still batting. Montreal still beating the Cardinals. They're in the eight seven five. Hubbard hits it foul up by Bobby Dews. Here it's two to one Atlanta. Not the fifth inning they played on the PA system. You got to have heart. I think that's from Damn Yankee. Fit in this year. The 0 1 over on 2. I think that show is being staged locally by the Atlanta Playhouse or somebody because they had some actors and actresses doing it prior to the game. Very popular. Great show. Movie made of it too. The pitch. A little bit high. Thurman has thrown a lot of pitches, but he trails only two to one. The Braves have seven hits, San Diego five. Hubbard's looking for his second hit of the game. He had a bunt single. Scroogey or whatever it is going down and out of there on strikes is Hubbard. He struck out the side, but he gave up a run. We go to the eighth. Two to one, Bray. Well done. Royster. Hubbard, nice play. Throws him out. One pitch, one down, top of the eighth. Boy, that must be something in Yankee Stadium. Earl Weaver has been kicked out of the second game before it started, probably exchanging the lineup card. He was kicked out of the first one, so was third base coach Cal Ripken Sr. That's happened to Earl before. Right up at home plate. Get back into it. Here's Tony Gwynn. A ball high.
And the 1 0. Line hit right field. Very seldom does he go hitless. Tony Gwynn with his first hit this afternoon and hit number six by San Diego. What do you think he said the second time he got kicked out? Not on Sunday. I'll bet he said more than that. Yes. The production of damn Yankees is opening up here in Atlanta on October 9th at the Georgia Pacific Center Theater. Where's Darby's that? a batter. Where's that? I haven't heard of that one. It's here in Atlanta. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you. One to know. In the production, the Atlanta Braves meet the Yankees in the World Series. <laughs> Runner going. The pitch is all the way to the backstop. Looked like Cerrone. Looked like Cerrone was crossed up. You've heard us talk about it. If you expect the curve and the pitcher throws a fastball, deep trouble. That might have happened. He never did shift. The ball just tailed up and in. That'll be a stolen base. He was going on the pitch. They've got the tying run at second. They've got the tying run with a chance to score. And he will do it. It's a 2-2 game. Garvey with a single up the middle. Make it 2-2. Looked like a fastball and he hit it right back where it came from. Murphy fielded it quickly but Gwynn is one of the fastest on their team. Pittsburgh has taken the lead over New York 7-6. Still batting in the eight. They've scored three runs. They have one on and two outs. Nettles on one. Forster's ready if needed. The 0 1 pitch in the dirt gets away. That'll be a wild pitch, and Garvey's down at second. Those are the kind that are really tough. You can't blame Cerrone at all. He shifted. He got his body in front of it. Just tried to deaden the ball, but it glanced away at an angle, and the runner moves up. Nettles is 0 for 3. Put Garvey at second on a wild pitch. Off the end of the bat. One ball, two strikes. Camp joins, joins Forster in the Braves bullpen. Now the one, two. Toward third. Rungi with a long throw. Got it. Garvey comes to third. Nice play by Paul Rungi. He's got a good arm, Paul does, and he shows it off there. Well, last time they were in this situation, they let Kennedy hit. They didn't put him on. There's the Braves bullpen. Leo Mazzoni's on his way out to see Mailer. It's a question of whether they pitch to Kennedy again. They struck him out last time, but that's a potential winning run at third base right now. Last time it was back in the six. Not quite as dangerous. Right hander is due next. No check that. Davis is due next. Believe he's a right hander.
He is. They're going to lock Kennedy to get to Davis. Davis took over for Martinez. There'll be runners at first and third and two away. There you see the numbers on Davis. This is only his 41st game and his 52nd at bat. Two away in the pitch. Strike. The L1. Low. Padres won last night in 13. Here's a 1-1. One, one. Slow curve. One and two. Every once in a while, Mailer will drop down and throw sidearm as he did there. Here's a one, two. Close, two and two. The Yankees beat the Orioles in the first of two, four nothing. Toronto's winning eight, three in the fifth at Milwaukee. Curve, got him. In the dirt, Jerome throws him out. Good pitching by Mailer. However, they tie it. We go to the bottom of the eighth, 2-2. Two, two. Murphy with an RBI on a ground out in the first, singled in the sixth. Toronto's pounding lumps on the Milwaukee Brewers at County Stadium. It's 10-3 now in the fifth. They want to have at least a four game lead with only three to play against the Yankees. Bobby Cox would feel happy about that. Everybody and their brother could play in that series wouldn't make any difference. 2 0. This guy throws hard. 3 0. They called him up first part of August. He was a starting pitcher in the minors. 3-0. Fastball high. Murphy's aboard. Thurman pitched well. Seven innings. Allowed only two runs. Seven hits. Bob Horner the better. It's a final. Montreal beat St. Louis 7 5. If New York comes back, they're trailing right now. There would be only three back. Pitch to the captain is low. Thurman walked three and struck out four. Braves got their batters up to do something about this 2-2 game. Harper's on deck. Horner hitting. Almost got hit. Boy, that Howard Johnson. Home run in the ninth to tie the game is 11th of the year. He's gotten some. He's had an awful year statistically, but he's gotten some big hits for the Mets down the stretch. 
Oh, hasn't he? So the Mets got a chance to win. And to cut a game off the Cardinals lead. Cardinals and Mets have a three game series coming up in St. Louis. Galen Sisko went out to talk to McCullers. To all. Hit high into the air in right center. McReynolds with a catch. Now the batter Terry Harper. Baltimore failed to score top of the first Yankees batting bottom half of the first and the second game. Don Mattingly had a home run in that first game. It was his 200th hit of the year. And it's the first time that any Yankee had gone back to back with years in which they hit 200 or more hits since Joe DiMaggio did it way back in 1936 and 7. Ernie, I understand on the sports page tonight, Nick Charles and Kevin Christopher will give exact quotes of what Earl Weaver said to get thrown out of the second game. That's a 10.05 Eastern time. <laughs> Might be rated R. One ball, no strikes. He said, he said dirty Macca Fritz and things like that. They do a great job on that show by the way. That's really a comprehensive look at the weekend sports. Earl probably turned his cap around when he was arguing. You know, a guy you we never mention and should on that sports page is Luis Castillo. He's the guy that puts it all together. He does a terrific job. Now the one one won't be made. Time call for the moment. Harper has had a base hit in three tries. Two official at bats. He walked once. He really didn't mean to swing. He started to, couldn't check it, fell down. Kennedy helps him up. Almost he's, helped him up. Look at Terry. <laughs> he's had that kind of day. He's falling down all over the place. He hit the deck in left field. He hits the deck at the plate. He really got sawed off there. Oop, boom. Kennedy says, keep passa. <laughs> keep your feet, you get a draw. <laughs> Terry's had a good year. 70 RBI. One two outside the Giants failed to score top of the first Dodgers now batting that's the Dodger Stadium runner going throw out of there Murphy's cut down Flannery took the throw and a strikeout. It is the top of the night. McReynolds takes a strike. You didn't see it. You're just going to have to take my word for it. And the 0-1. That is not a strike. That's right, Ernie. McReynolds homered in the fifth inning. 1-1. Pirates bat in the bottom of the ninth. It's seven seven. Now the two one. Three and one. Extra innings yesterday. Heading that way today. That's a base hit to left. Boy, he's swinging a bat well. Tiebreaker at first and nobody out. Ray's bullpen quiet. Tim Flannery's the batter. He's one for three.
London foul. Not Terry Forster and Rick Cam start throwing. We haven't the attendances yet. But you said it was what? 7,588. Okay. Or thereabouts. No, I said it was 7,588. You were right on target last night. I know. <laughs> Boring, isn't it? Yeah. Being maybe. right all the time. <laughs> I, tell you. I was wrong once. Yeah. I thought I'd made a mistake, and it turned out I hadn't. <laughs> Here's the old one. To the man. Gonna try it. Out at second. Good play by Mailer. Let's see if Zavella's okay. Flannery just bunts this ball too hard. It's almost like a pepper game, and Mailer doesn't hesitate. Give Sharon credit. I'm sure he was screaming. And there's the hit on Zavella, but he's all right. Bobby Brown inserted into the lineup in the last inning, batting ninth. The pitcher is batting six. Brown hasn't been too productive. Batting only 158. He's a switch hitter. Two balls and no strike. High pop foul back out of play. the two on over our ticker has the Giants leading the Dodgers one nothing after one the scoreboard has San Francisco failing to score in the first but I think they got one sidearm curve to a lefty got to make sure it's in a good spot that's risky business yes. isn't it they see it so well and it's flat. Two and two. All the way again. The 65 Roses Club of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation honored Bob Horner, Dale Murphy, and Terry Forster today before the game. They do a lot of work for cystic fibrosis. Two two. Fly ball left. Terry Harper. Now with two down, we go to the top of the order. Jerry Royster, looking for his first hit of the day. He's 0 for four. He's playing short today because. Gary Templeton took a bad hop in the side of the face last night, had to leave the game. Flannery has a couple of stolen bases, but he's just average speed. He's been caught five times. California's clubbing Cleveland now it's eight to three in the eighth and Minnesota's beating Kansas City six to three in the eighth. Those scores stay the Angels a game up. What do you like of the Texas Seattle game that's just getting started. <laughs> Plot riding. 
their announcer said the same thing about our game. About our game. Look at that. Jerry Royster. Dropped one down for a base hit. That'll bring Bobby Wine out of the dugout. He's got the left-hander Forster in the bullpen. And left-hand hitter Tony Gwynn is the batter. He's a very, very good hitter against anybody. So I don't know if Bobby's going to make a move or not. He has not looked to the bullpen. Yeah, another good pitching performance by Mailer here. It's good to know that he's back. Yeah, he's going to give him the hook. I think. The fans want Mailer to stay in the game. But Forster will be called upon. Mailer will get a nice ovation from the fans here. They're standing behind the dugout. Rick said two good outings in a row. The Braves' best pitcher this year, that a boy, Rick. While Forster takes his warm-up tosses, we'll break away for this message. Be the batter with runners at first and second. Bruce Benedict signed a three-year contract today. Speculation is on it's worth over $500,000 a year. Baylor has just homered for the Yankees in the first with one on his 22nd. And the Yankees lead Baltimore 3-0. Still batting in the first. Tony Gwynn who goes with the pitch. Pitch him outside, hits it to left. Pitch him inside, pulls it to right. Tough guy. Won't hit that one anywhere. Right under the chin, 1-0. Hit him again, two and all. Popeye's on deck. That's Steve Garvey with those forearms. Now a two all. Make it three and all. And the cripple. Ball four. Well, let's see now if Bobby Wine takes Forster out and replaces him with Kent. Looks like it's going to happen. The bases are loaded. Flannery is at third. Albert Hall is a new left fielder. Harper's out. Camp's a new pitcher. Garvey's a batter with the bases loaded. 8,292 paid here this afternoon. Camp's first pitch. Almost hitting. 1-0. It's 2-2, two, two, top of the ninth. Broken bat pop, Zavella. Camp jammed him for out number three. Extra innings at Pittsburgh, New York 7, Pittsburgh 7. Thompson at 3 -0 3 no homers, six RBI. The fans like it. He's been an exciting player. Thompson had three hits here last night. Two of them doubles. Fouled away.
Toronto now leading Milwaukee 11 3 in the six Yankees leading Baltimore 3 nothing they got three in the first Baylor had a two run homer and the one two out the way McCullers doesn't get very fancy he just rears back and lets it fly Gene Walter starts throwing in their bullpen oh Thompson's hit with a curveball he's not going to rob looked like a curveball that just chased him it hurt him a little bit too but he's not going to as they say rub give anybody any satisfaction Yeah, I got him very close to that funny bone. Thompson's at first. Comments is a better. They are looking for the bunt. Nettles at third, Garvey first. The colors with a pretty good move over there. I believe he offered it that. Yes, he did. Home plate ump said he didn't. They asked Rennert, and he said yes. Yeah. Yeah, there was no doubt about it. He tried to bunt the ball right there and missed it. The 0-1. All right, one ball, one strike. Boy, it's hard to bunt a guy who can throw hard, especially if he keeps it up a little bit. You tend to pop it up. One ball, one strike. It is a sacrifice for comments. Took a little funny hop on him. And by now, there's nothing he can do anyway. It's a sacrifice, an error on the pitcher. Two are on with nobody out. Now you figure that Paul Rungi will be bunting as well, and the Padres will doubtless put a play on with Royster covering third and Nettles charging. That would be my guess. Remember, they made the switch, so Albert Hall is batting in the pitcher spot. Rungi's had a good day. Single in the fifth and doubled in a run in the seventh. Comments get first. Thompson at second. And the bun attempt. A ball low. Just about every team has the same defensive plays. Just a question of when you put it on. Nettles wants to make sure that McCullers knows just what's going to happen. Kennedy goes out too. Winning run at second base in a 2-2 game. Mailer went eight and two thirds. Gave up nine hits, two runs. They were earned. Three walks, one intentional, and five strikeouts. So the folks back in Texas got to be rejoicing as Rick has two good outings. See that play doesn't work for them either. <laughs> One oh bunny good bunt. Well, Paul Rungi does the job. He gets the winning run to third. Comments gives it second. Albert Hall is scheduled. Let's see if he bats. 
They've got a base open. They've got Claudel Washington. They've got Chambliss. Gerald Perry. Gerald Perry as pinch hitters. I think the guess here is that they'll walk him anyway, but they may not. We'll have to wait and see. Chambliss I comes to the on deck. Yeah, they'll put him on to set up the double play and a force at the plate. But that's why Hall continues to hit in this spot. Why waste a guy if you're going to walk him anyway? We've really beat him to death in this inning, haven't we? Yes. A hit batsman, an air, a sacrifice, and an intentional walk. And the bases will be loaded for Chambliss, I believe. They might make a pitching change. I don't think Chambliss has been announced yet. Dick started out, now goes back. He's going to make the Braves announce somebody before he. Yes. Yes. Fred Brocklander went over and then yelled to Marshall Man Chambliss. The announcement has to be made. Now Williams will come out. It looks like Gene Walter down there. And Ramirez will hit for Chambliss. And I imagine that's what Bobby Wine wanted out of this situation. While they make the pitching change, we'll break away for this message. And remember, the Cardinals have already lost seven to five. If New York wins, they're only three back. I'm not sure if that series starts tomorrow in St. Louis or not. I'm not either. See you tomorrow or Tuesday. Yes. Kennedy. Telling Walter now, if you get a ball hit back to you, come on home with it. Yeah, Dick Williams looks on. Ramirez came on last night, had a pinch hit single. The winning run is at third. Ramirez with a chance to pick up his 58th RBI. That would match his National League high. They've got everybody in the outfield at Little League depth. Fly ball of any depth, it's over. So everybody is close, and the pitch almost hit him. One and zero. Oh. Tickles the fans when they see the outfielders playing this shallow. They've seen infields up, but not the outfielders. There you can see him. Now the 1 0. Gets away and almost hit him again. 2 0. The old walk is as good as a hit. Comes into play. Do you manage? Do you turn him loose now? Got to throw a strike. You get a good pitch to hit, or do you make him throw a strike first? I'd like to make him throw a strike. Now I know I make him throw a strike. It's 3 0. In fact, it could go right down the line and the fans stand up to try to rattle Gene Walter. Bad pitch and it's over. Three out. Great call, three and one. I gotta let him hit here. Three balls and one strike. One out, winning run third. Three one. Hit foul. Get a good cut, three and two. Give Walter credit. He came back from three and oh with the bases loaded and a winning run at third. That's not easy. Plate starts to look like a postage stamp. Now Ramirez has to guard the play. Three two. Everybody will touch the next base. Ramirez gets a walk. The Braves win 
three two on a walk for the bases loaded final score and skip has the total okay Ernie for Atlanta three runs seven hits no errors the Braves left nine for the Padres two runs nine hits two errors they left ten Rick Camp in relief the winner he's three and six Lance McCullers in relief the loser he is 0 and 2 Rafael Ramirez gets a major league ties his major league high in RBIs with his 58th it was his fifth game winning RBI of the year 8,292 paid to see it coming up next the sports report with all the scores from baseball and football with Paul Wright. Thank you for joining us today on Braves Baseball. Our next telecast will be tomorrow night from Houston, airtime, 835, Nolan Ryan against Pascual Peru. Till then, for Skip Carey, Pete Van Weeren, John Sterling, and our entire staff from Atlanta, this is Ernie Johnson, and on this winning afternoon, so long, everybody.